I've already lost count of the days since they relieved me of duty. Strange how years of your life can just vanish in the blink of an eye. Then in a flash, you've got nothing but time. Time to reflect on everything that's happened. Hard to believe it's been only a few years since this all began. We were testing out the Normandy, Captain Anderson's new ship, when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. And whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Olenko. A good kid, loyal, by the book, with a talent for biotics. We came across the lone survivor of the patrol, Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. A soldier to the core. Tough, disciplined, ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. The ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive, scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted away. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact, a beacon left by a long-dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up, and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Chief Williams made the mistake of getting too close. It hit her with some type of energy. I grabbed her and threw her out of the way. That's when it hit me. Hard. Every muscle in my body went rigid. I couldn't move. Could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. A vision. A dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Adina, our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat. As was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian specter named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime. And there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Adina's pointed accusations weren't enough to convince the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite specters could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof. Which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another Turian, wanted to help. A top agent for Citadel security. Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren, and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest-looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Saren. The fugitive turned out to be an energetic little quarian named Tally. A tech expert with a knack for hacking, she'd procured some information on Saren. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime, and that the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. But it went much further. Saren was trying to find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, then disappearing back through the mass relays to dark space, leaving no trace they'd ever been. That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and it made some sense out of my visions. But not much else. We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat, but they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind, giving up his ship, the Normandy. He told me I would need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. Liara, a Prothean expert, adept in biotics, and maybe most importantly, daughter of Benezia, Saren's top lieutenant. And like most Asari, as beautiful as she is intelligent, and born with a unique ability to meld with other species. Liara was able to help me decipher some of the vision the beacon had given me. Nothing concrete, but it gave me some clues. And a new appreciation for the Asari. Her technique for accessing my vision was unexpected, but not at all unpleasant. 
Ashley was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara. As commander, I knew either relationship had the potential to interfere with the mission. I told Ash I wasn't interested in Liara. I had my eyes on someone else. But we agreed we wouldn't let it get in the way of our mission. Finding Saren. Thanks to Liara's help, we had our next lead. Venezia. Saren had taken her to Novaria, where he'd enslaved a dangerous race of insect-like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Venezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni Queen. The Queen's drones were everywhere, and they weren't happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Venezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone. With the information. I tried to reason with Venezia, but Saren had indoctrinated her. He had somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Venezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't doom an entire species for past sins. And the queen was true to her word. She left and took her army of drones with her. With Saren's top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer. But we soon learned it was more than a base of operations. It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the genophage, a disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves, mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base and all its research. Rex disagreed, violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy it, that these Krogan weren't real. But he wouldn't back down. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. He realized this wasn't the way to help his people, and that Saren was the real threat. When we finally got to the center of the base, I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship, it was a Reaper. It spoke to me, threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead. It wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. I split up my team in two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke, and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign. The Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control, said he found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence, but he was kidding himself, or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, he ran, leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried, but I wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. Caden was a good man, and a great soldier. But I had to choose, and I chose Ash. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, the next time we met, one of us would die. With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Protheans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship, against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. But Ash saw through my words. She knew I was hurting after Caden's death. She could sense my doubts. We both knew this mission could be our last. Until that moment, we'd put our feelings aside for the sake of that mission. But why wait? 
We gave in to each other. And it was perfect. While it lasted. We arrived on Ilos, close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago. And every 50,000 years before that. Each time purging the galaxy of life. The Protheans had fought and died, like every species before them. But a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space, slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space, bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. We followed him to the Citadel. It was intact, but heavily damaged. He had caught the Council fleets by surprise, and they were only now regrouping. And with Sovereign as his flagship, there was little hope the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. But Saren was done running, and I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Citadel fleets battled Saren's army outside, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, fell under attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have to put our human alliance fleet in jeopardy. The Council had to be saved. They represented the hearts and minds of the galactic community. Without them, the fleets would be in disarray. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated, and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet, the battle against Sovereign, a single Reaper, was relentless. It took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races, but in the end, Sovereign fell. But the costs were immense. While humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the Council, it was a hollow victory. The Reapers were still out there. I knew the fight was far from over, but as the one who'd led the fight against Saren, I was given new responsibilities. The choice of humanity's first counselor was left for me to decide. On the one hand, Udina, the lifetime politician. Ruthless and ambitious, he would easily navigate the political landmines that would soon be put in front of him. The other choice, Captain Anderson, the career soldier. Tough but fair, but a friend, and someone I could trust. Both great leaders in their own right. I didn't much like Udina, but sometimes you need a pit bull on your side. Someone willing to be the bad guy, for the sake of the greater good. The war was over. The threat had passed. In time, the Council would rebuild itself. The Citadel could be repaired. Even the pain of lost friends would fade. But none of that mattered if the Reapers were still out there. And if they were all as powerful as Sovereign, we had to find a way to stop them. I had to find a way. I gathered my crew, took my ship, and went in search of answers. Officially, the Council would only say I was assigned to cleanup duty, rooting out any remnants of Saren's army. But the Geth and Saren were just the beginning. The Reapers had other plans. A few months after the battle for the Citadel, while we were on patrol, we were attacked by an unknown vessel. Before we knew what was happening, we were disabled and forced to abandon ship. The Normandy was destroyed. We lost a lot of good people. I almost didn't make it myself. Technically, I was as close to death as you can get. By the time my body was recovered, there wasn't much left. The pro-human group, Cerberus, acquired what was left of my body and spent the next two years rebuilding me. My memories, abilities, everything. The person in charge of my recovery was a Cerberus agent, Miranda Lawson. Brilliant and efficient. But before I could be completely rehabilitated, the Cerberus facility we were in was attacked and was forced to fight my way out. In my condition, I should have died. But an ex-Alliance soldier named Jacob Taylor kept me alive. We found Miranda and we escaped. 
They took me to meet the elusive man, the leader of Cerberus and the one who had ordered me rebuild. The elusive man lived up to his name, offering half answers to many of my questions. But he did explain why he had brought me back. He believed I was the one person who could stop the Reaper threat. And he explained that the Reapers had a new ally, an insectoid race called the Collectors, the ones who had attacked the Normandy two years earlier. Since that time, they'd been systematically abducting entire human colonies and taking them beyond the Omega-4 Relay, a place that no ships other than Collector ships ever returned from. The elusive man wanted me to find out why humans were being abducted, and to end it. In return, Cerberus would outfit me with a rebuilt Normandy, weapons, and a skeleton crew, as long as I agreed to take along Miranda, Jacob, and an illegal AI named Edie. I told the elusive man I wanted my own team, people I knew. He already had a list of individuals that he wanted, people that might be willing to go on a suicide mission, to head beyond the Omega-4 relay and face the unknown. It was an interesting list. Ex-convicts, assassins, experimental scientists. In the end, it was my choice. It would take time and effort to recruit them all, and with more humans disappearing every day, I wasn't sure I should bother. I decided I needed all the help I could get. Recruiting the team took me all over the galaxy. Along the way, I met some old friends. They were quick to join, despite the risks. As for the rest, Finding them and convincing them to join me on a suicide mission was difficult. But keeping them from killing each other was next to impossible. They only had to stay alive long enough to complete the mission. I wasn't sure what difference it would make if they were happy doing it. But if we were going to survive this, our best chance was to make sure everyone was working together. I tried to recruit and reconnect with a few of my old squad, but they were suspicious of Cerberus. No doubt why they weren't on the elusive man's list to begin with. Worse, they had moved on. For two years, they'd believed I was dead and lost. Now? Now I was headed off on another suicide mission. If things were going to get better between us, it would take time. But I was running out of time. Maybe once the mission was over, we could try to reconnect. With most of the team recruited, we were getting close. We just needed to figure out how to survive the Omega-4 Relay. Our best chance came when we discovered a damaged collector ship. We went in knowing it could be a trap, but we had to try. What we found there was almost unbelievable. The collectors weren't a new race at all. They were the twisted remnants of the Protheans, slaves of the Reapers, and humans were the next target. The collectors were abducting tens of thousands of humans for the Reapers, and unless we could find a way to stop them, we'd end up just like the Protheans. We had to escape before we could find out the secrets of the Omega-4 Relay but we were more determined than ever to put a stop to the Collectors. All we needed now was a way through the relay. Edie had figured out what we needed, and the elusive man knew where to find it. We stole parts from a derelict Reaper to mask our ship's signature, to make the Normandy appear as a Reaper and allow us safe passage. As soon as we had what we needed, Joker and Edie began testing. But while I was away on a mission with the team, the Collectors attacked the Normandy, determined to destroy it before we could finish the tests. Joker and Edie did their best to fight them off. They saved the ship, but the entire crew was abducted, taken beyond the Omega-4 relay. Jacob wanted to go immediately and rescue the crew. Edie and Miranda wanted more time to prepare before we attacked. We only had one chance to attack the Collectors. I knew we had to be ready before we went, even if it meant sacrificing the crew. I gathered everyone to go over the plan. We all knew this was likely a one-way ticket. The team was ready, but they were nervous. We knew this could be our last day together. We were scared and looking for reassurance. Some of us found it in each other. But I went to my cabin to be alone, to prepare for the attack, go over every detail. I had to make sure we were ready. The day of the attack, everything went as planned. At first, the Normandy made it safely through. As we scanned the wreckage of all the ships that had failed before us, we found what we were looking for. The Collector Base. And guarding it, the ship that had destroyed the Normandy two years ago, and almost ended my life. But this time, we were the attacker. And the Normandy was equipped to deal with it. We took some damage, but destroyed the Collector ship, and made our way to their base. We knew the fighting inside would be brutal. 
We arrived intact, but the team wasn't strong enough to withstand the assault. Eventually, we made it to the heart of the base. To this day, I can hardly believe what we saw there. The collected humans had been dissolved, transformed and repurposed to create the frame for a new Reaper. A massive human Reaper abomination. We had no choice but to destroy it. The battle caused severe damage to the base, but we needed to destroy it completely. As I prepped explosives to finish the job, we received a message. The elusive man. He didn't want us to destroy the base at all. He wanted to preserve it. He wanted to study how the humans were transformed into the abomination we'd seen. To use the technology of the Collectors to help defeat the Reapers. I always suspected the elusive man had his own motives, but I couldn't agree with him on this. We had stopped the Collectors. We would find a way to stop the Reapers without sacrificing our morality in the process. We destroyed the base, completely, and escaped back through the Omega-4 Relay. The mission was a success, and in the end, the whole team made it out alive. And though the crew was killed before we could rescue them, they didn't die in vain. We stopped the Collectors, and we stopped the Reapers from creating their abomination. And we bought everyone just a little more time. If only there was more time. The Reapers are still coming. Every day a bit closer. I handed every piece of intel on the Collectors and Cerberus over to the Alliance Brass. They're not sure what to make of it, but at least they're listening. I just hope they figure out what to do about it soon, before time runs out for all of us.